take a girl and a guy, and they fall madly in love and form a family. Sprinkle in some counseling degrees and a doctorate, a dream of transforming relationships as we know it. And 20 years later, we give you power couple Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. And this is their podcast, Couples Synergy. And welcome back to another episode of Couples Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean. Hi, I am Dr. Ray. And I'm Jean. And this is our podcast about love, marriage, and relationships. Please check us out online on our Facebook page and Instagram at Couples Synergy or our website, couplesynergy.com. And be sure to subscribe to our podcast or send us any suggestions on topics you'd like to hear more about. And now on to Couples Synergy, our podcast that takes an in-depth look at love, marriage, and relationships, where we bring our experience helping thousands of couples transform their relationships for over 20 years. You know, everyone says you should work on your relationship, but nobody teaches us how. So we've created this podcast to teach people what they can do to create the relationship they've always dreamed of. With the partner they fell in love with. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about resentment and how resentment affects relationships, how resentment affects people in general. And this is a very important topic because when couples start having distance in their relationship, distance between each other, that distance is replaced by resentment. I always start with resentments when I'm working with women because You know, when men hurt, they typically lash out, but when women hurt, they typically don't, or they take it in on themselves. They turn inward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the first part about resentment that is so important is validation. You know, when we're young, we think that if we don't get the outcome we want, there's something that we did wrong. But resentment is not a regret. That's a regret. A regret is something you've done. Resentment is when something's done to you that you don't like. And if you can't validate that, then you can't possibly begin to work on it. And there's a lot of people out there that aren't able to validate their resentment and they just simmer in it. Now, resentment does serve a purpose. Otherwise, we wouldn't have it. Mm -hmm. Right. And so anger, resentment, um, it's speculated that what it, the, the purpose that it serves is it helps you not make that mistake again. It right. helps protect you. You are now aware that there is something coming your way or someone has hurt you or someone has done something to you. And so now you have to protect yourself. You have to defend yourself. The problem happens when resentment occurs over a long period of time or builds up right? like one after the other. When you don't validate it and take action... Or maybe as a child you were taught you should just forgive and forget. Oh, just let it go. Just let it go. Yeah. Just, you know, it, it, there is something to say about letting things go. Mm-hmm. And when we talk about how to resolve resentment within yourself, that, that is something we'll talk about. But I think what we're talking about here, when you are taught to just let it go, you are taught to ignore it. You Mm -hmm. are taught to just allow people to treat you that way. Well, if you notice, it'll happen over and over again. You can forgive it all you want, but it's going to happen all over and over again because there's a function of resentment that you are participatory in, even if it's not your fault. And and it can 100% not be your fault. But it is your responsibility how you respond to that. And how you protect yourself in the future from those things. And if you don't figure out what you need to change about yourself to protect yourself, you'll stay really stuck in resentment. And you'll get that lesson over and over and over again. And I think you will stay stuck in blame, external blame, and not utilize that opportunity to learn from it and to grow from it. (laughs) Makes me laugh because almost every couple... In the first session, when we first meet them and ask them, you know, what are we doing? They always want their partner to change. Yeah. And they can't see that maybe they've got some work to do. Yes. And they are so focused on their partner changing and they're so focused on the anger that they have about their partner not changing that 
it becomes this huge roadblock. And what happens then is they start to attract and create more situations for them to be resentful about. Yep, that's absolutely how it works because it, it is something coming up for healing even if it isn't something you've created. You know, the assumption is that it's in your life to help you learn something, right? None of us like our resentments no, at all. No. But when we think if our partner would just change, I'll feel better. What ends up happening is you end up changing partners and feeling the same way. If your partner changes first and you don't change with them. Yeah. And then the question keeps coming up in your head is like, why me? Mm -hmm. Why do people treat me this way? And that resentment then goes external, right? It's because mm-hmm. it's a, it's these people. They don't change. I keep attracting the same old people. Poor me. Poor me. Poor me. And, you know, when we talk about resentment that is carried over a long period of time, it, it can have physiological ramifications. You know, we know that anger in general or someone who is angry can lead to coronary art- artery disease, um, it can lead to a lowered immune system. It could also worsen conditions of anxiety. It can also increase stroke risks. I mean, there's so much. There's so much um, ramifications that anger has on us physically. Resentment as well. Resentment leads to um, hardened things like cancer. Right, increased right. stress mm-hmm. levels. Yeah, and, over, and over overall, a long period of overall time. reduced Very lifespan. Long of time. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it's um, it's also one of the signs that a relationship is really, really in trouble. Mm-hmm. As if people, if both people have a lot of resentment towards each other, to the point that they're contemptuous, right? They have contempt for their partner. Which is really bad. You're in a really bad spot if there's a lot of contempt in your relationship. You both haven't been working on it for a really long time. Yeah, it shows that you don't have any respect for your partner at all. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't respect who they are. You don't respect the the choices that they make or you don't even like them. And it's really sad because there there was a point in your life they were your person. And they were the one you wanted to spend your life with. Right. You can always spot resentment in a couple when there's sarcasm. Um, digs. Digs. You can Bickering. spot it if they are rolling their eyes, you know, at their partner mm-hmm. because of what they said. Um, and, you know, often this becomes public. Yeah. Everyone else can see it, too. And it's kind of funny because people think, well, if I just let other people know that I'm right, my partner will get it that I'm right. Right. We call that the Jerry Springer effect, right? That's why they go on and they think they're right. And I guarantee you it's 50-50. It's a dance you guys are doing. Even if someone is being particularly mean and the other person is tolerating that behavior, that is still part of participatory uh, on both people's parts of the condition of the relationship. And often that person becomes very passive aggressive. Mm -hmm. You know, they're allowing it on one hand, but then they they kind of get back at their partner in a, in a very passive, aggressive way. Right. Or a sneaky way, mm-hmm. I should say. You know, I just want to clarify this idea of what you have to do about your resentments. You know, the analogy of, you know, someone's driving down the street and they go up on the sidewalk, run someone over and break their leg. The person who has the broken leg is entirely not at fault. That's not the point. But what they do with it is... You know, they can't tell the driver of the car to wear the cast because that's not going to help their leg get better. just doesn't work that way. But they could do some contemplating in their life and go, hmm, maybe I need to slow down or why do I have to sit for six weeks in a cast? You know, what is this? What is the opportunity here for me? Maybe I'm not appreciative of my legs and haven't been working out and I got pretty lazy and this is like a wake-up call saying, Well, how does it feel when it doesn't work at all? And those are the things. It isn't so much that, you know, you have to take responsibility. It's that that is where the power is. You have no power over if someone runs you over or not. But you have power over what am I going to do now that I've been 
served this delicious dish of a broken leg. I, I like that example because it really highlights the difference between what has been done to you and what you can do about it, right? Because justifiably, you can be angry at the person who run, ran you over. Mm -hmm. Justifiably, yeah. right? Everyone can understand why you'd be angry. Now, are you going to now take responsibility for what has happened to you in your life? Meaning that are you going to take control of your life and take control of the reaction to this situation? Or are you going to just continue to blame and be angry at the other person? That doesn't do anything for your healing and it does nothing for, for you them. moving forward. Right. And it makes you sick. Yes. And so it's really tough. It's a really tough spot to be in. And it's absolutely illogical. The logic is correct. It's not your fault. That logic is correct. The illogical piece is, and now how am I going to let this make me better? And, you know, those are tough things that some of us don't want to face. But every time you do, you do get stronger, you get healthier, you have a greater understanding of who you are and how you operate. You have greater confidence over how you're going to manage your life, no matter what happens, no matter what comes your way. So you live with less fear. And ultimately, if somebody is really able to resolve a resentment, they're going to be grateful for the experience. Yeah, that's really tough. Yeah. <laughs> that's really, really tough, you know, to be grateful for the experience, for the opportunity, to even be grateful for the person that has caused you this pain. That right. takes just like, oh my gosh, so much. That's the big word. So much to do that, yeah. right? But I think that's really where, you know, people get tripped up when someone says you have to let it go. Yeah, letting it go makes it seem like you're holding a ball and you just open your hand and it just floats out and down to the ground. But to me, it's more like detach, like a burr, like you're pulling and it gets stuck over there and you got to you gotta really work at getting it off you. I think it's like holding a bowling ball and letting it go and it dropping on your foot. <laughs> <laughs> it's and painful. Then, and then it cracks your floor and <laughs> uh, yeah. then you need a cast. Yeah. Yeah, letting go of the anger that you have towards the other person and shifting that to taking responsibility for what you have power and control over changing, that is a very difficult thing to do. Because mm -hmm. it seems like you are allowing that person to treat you that way. Like you are complicit in it. Mm -hmm. I, I think that would be the case only if you don't do anything, you don't take power and control right. over it your responsibility you don't let go and your reaction. If right. you don't figure it out. Yeah, sometimes I like to think um, if I'm having bad thoughts about you, like, what you is it? bad thoughts about me? <laughs> no. What? No, sometimes. Um, what does it mean about me if I'm choosing to hang around with someone that I think that about? Mm -hmm. Like, so why don't I leave? If I really think that, why don't I leave? Why do I participate in that? Why do I do that? And that helps me look at what my part of it is. Like where, where am I not, you know, maybe aware of something or looking at something in my life. And again, it's never fun. And sometimes it really helps to, in a, in a very strange way, this is actually a technique of Alcoholics Anonymous because one of their steps is to work on their resentments, right? Right. And what they're told to do or asked to do is to bless that person for two weeks. Mm. Wish that person well for two weeks. Mm -hmm. To pray for them. Yes. <laughs> and just the willingness to be able to try to see that person as a human being with flaws that may need some support with prayer or blessings or whatever, um, that defines who you are. Right. Not them. That that response is something you have control over, right. whether you do that or not. Mm -hmm. I mean, you think about it in an intimate relationship, in a committed partnership, what would get you, um, you know, what, what kind of result in a relationship would you get if you are holding on to this resentment towards your partner? If you are continued, continually being angry 
at them, or if you are wishing them well, if you are blessing them, if you are praying for them, mm-hmm. that that moves you closer to each other. That moves you closer to a solution. You know, maybe the situation isn't ideal, but if you are working on your part in changing that, it gives you the best chance possible of changing what's going on. You know, it's the same thing we do for our children, right? If we have a three-year-old or a four-year-old and they're melting down and they're saying, I hate you, I hate you, we don't go, fine, I hate you too, get the hell out of my house, (laughs) you know? We help them calm down and we don't take it personally and then we try to fix it later on down the line because we know they're little kids, but Mm -hmm. when we're adults... It's the same part of our brain that that little kid is overtired, frustrated, scared that is being activated. And when it's in our partner, it it feels so personal. Right. And it's not, but it feels, it hurts you. That part's real, Mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily about you. It's something your partner's going through. And we forget to be careful with our partners. And we see these grown adults acting like a temper tantrum. And it's really easy for us to wall up and push away and and treat them as though they have no right to their feelings instead of, you know, maybe saying, hey, what's going on? That's not like you. Well, that that is responding to a situation that maybe was painful with compassion, with a, a uh, an attempt to understand. Mm-hmm. Versus holding on to this anger and resentment towards your partner, which then leads to control and manipulation. Yeah. It's really a difficult thing to do. And this is, I I would say, where the majority of couples that want help because they say they have an issue with communication, Mm -hmm. this is the kingpin of the issue. Yeah. And it's, it's almost unconscious. Like you're not even aware of it. You're aware of being hurt. You're aware of having a fight with your partner because you're frustrated or whatever, but you're not really aware of what 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 can we do about this? Mm-hmm. And, and they try to approach it by making rules, mm-hmm. right? If you're resentful towards your partner for not, you know, doing the dishes more, and now you're going to jump to control and manipulation and setting up rules that now you have to do the dishes, you know, three times a week or this is the consequence. And now you become adversaries and not truly partners because you know, it's not about the dishes. It's never about the dishes. No, it's not. It's, it's about what that means to you Mm -hmm. that you're not, you don't feel important in the relationship or you don't feel like you have an equal partner. You know, there's, there's so much underneath that when, when you have those feelings come up and most couples, they don't address that. Right. And when those feelings come up, you feel the sum total of all the times you've ever felt that feeling, not just in relationship to the dishes. And that's why it looks so big and so painful. And it's typically something that you've experienced many times in your life. And that's why you have such a big emotional reaction to it. And you don't understand yourself why you're going through that. Right, right. You know, the Relationship 101 home study course that we you know, offer, that is the serious step-by-step nuts and bolts of how human beings get that way. And it is, we're, we're, we're rather complicated. Yes. (laughs) Very complicated human beings. And then you put two people together in a relationship and wow, the, the complexities are endless. And on one level, they love each other very much and don't want to live without each other. And on another level, they're in so much pain. And as time goes by, that pain doesn't ease. It hardens. And that's where you know you got work to do. I promise you, your partner didn't put that pain in you. They may have stepped on it a few times, Mm -hmm. maybe even a lot of times. Yeah. But the ideal is to actually resolve and heal the, the deeper pain. Yeah, it's like you've heard the phrase, you know, they can push me, push my buttons. Well, that button existed there before your partner came into your life. Yeah. They just learned to push it. <laughs> sometimes they push it intentionally. Sometimes they push it unintentionally. Most of the time it's unintentional. But 
you know. Well, we actually show them here is the button. Yeah. And yeah. here's how it operates. And here's what you can do if you'd really like to push it. Mm-hmm. And then they do. And then when they're hurting, they go push it. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Yeah, so the the home study course relationship one on one, you can get that on our website, couplesynergy dot com, and just under experiences, you can just click relationship one on one. It'll take you right to it. Um, eight modules. It is very very comprehensive mm-hmm. and helps you as a couple kind of go through multiple exercises and understand your relationship at a much much deeper level. It's mostly supposed to be fun even though it gets into some deeper stuff but it is set up like date night and we do recommend that you only do one module a week yeah it's yeah. way too much to do more than one in a week to understand all those concepts and to to really start to integrate them but it will let you have that conversation that you're not having and should be having mm-hmm. and don't even know it right and if you feel resentment towards your partner there are a lot of conversations you should be having that you guys are not having and that's why that resentment's there. Yeah. A lot of times I'll ask people to do a resentment list and they'll say, I don't feel like blaming my parents. I don't feel like talking bad about people. I don't want to be focused on negativity. But if my husband would only change. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the thing is, is, is those are, those are like socialized domestication things that you were taught that doesn't allow you to use that power. Because your resentment really isn't about another person. It's about a validation within yourself that you can recognize and give yourself permission to have a feeling. Even if that feeling ends up being something that you can change or is not accurate, you can't even begin to work on it if you can't validate it. Yeah. And that's, I think, where a lot of people get tripped up. This is a very difficult thing to do. Yeah, it's a really tough, tough topic. You know, don't don't think out there that we think that this is very easy that you could mm-hmm. just let let it go. You know, how about one and melt done? Melt your resentment. Yeah, one and done. Oh, I already I let go of that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, that's. Uh, I'm always like, did you ever weed the garden? Oh my gosh, yeah. Did you ever clean your garage? <laughs> yeah, it comes back. It comes back. It comes back. So yeah. it's really about knowing how to continuously weed or clean that keeps you feeling better, but it it comes up. I don't know. I'll let you know when it stops coming up for me, but it's Yeah, what do they say about weeding gardens? Uh, weed early, weed often. Weed early and weed often. <laughs> hey, that's a really good example. Yeah. You know, or I guess analogy, mm-hmm. metaphor, whichever one you want to pick the words. I always mix it up. But um, really good good example there for relationships and resentments. It, they are going to come up frequently, and you have to weed often and early. Otherwise, they grow. And don't weed during a thunderstorm. A fu- uh, yeah, so don't. <laughs> so that means don't try to process resentments when you're in the middle of a fight. Right. Yeah. That part of us has no relationship to time, and you're the part of you that's a problem solver is offline when you're upset. So wait, you guys can wait till you cool off, and have some time to really come at it more compassionately. And ask your person, what's really going on for you? I'll tell you here, though, this trend that we are seeing, Gene, about couples and not spending any time None. together whatsoever, yeah. they are just collecting these resentments and they just build over time. They're not even actually having a relationship with their partner anymore. No. Their no. partner's in the room, but their relationship's in their head. Or or having more of a relationship with the kids. Mm-hmm. You know, they have a great co-parenting relationship. But when it comes to their relationship together, even as just friends, yeah. that is not being nurtured at right. all. Yeah. And I mean, especially in today's day and age, couples don't have the energy, you know, to put towards the relationship, let alone put towards themselves. Well, at some level, it's a choice. I, I know everyone's really busy out there, but... I do believe the average screen time is about seven to eight hours a day. Yeah. there's. Yeah. So if you want to find some time, you can probably turn off your screens. Although then you actually have to deal with your stress and everything you're avoiding by, you know, checking out on you your screen. You have to acknowledge it. Yeah. You have to talk about it. You have mm-hmm. to process it. And we get it. It's not fun to do. It doesn't feel good to acknowledge the stress. 
you know, it's it's feels, painful. It can also start another fight. Yeah. You know, who wants to keep yeah. fighting? It sucks. And it feels much easier to just distract yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, go turn on the TV, go and just do whatever it is that you do to distract yourself because that's easier. Mm-hmm. And more comfortable. And more comfortable. Yeah. Same reason we don't work out, right? Yeah. There's a couch potato or you work out. <laughs> right. And it's the same. It's, you know, all these analogies. It's, I, I wish there was a softer, easier way, but it's just life. And life requires us to invest and grow. And, you know, you don't lift the feathers, you go lift the heavy weights. And that's how you get stronger and better. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So the topic of resentments, it's a very, it's a very big one. Yeah. And, you know, for you couples out there that might be struggling with that, you know, you might want to just take notice, you know, check out the home study course, Relationship 101 on couplesynergy.com um, or email us with any questions you might have. Mm-hmm. So we want to thank you so much for joining us today on Couple Synergy and tuning in on this topic. Our passion is in helping couples and people have happy and healthy relationships. And this podcast gives us a fun way of bringing our knowledge and expertise to you, our listeners. It now 80,000 strong yeah. all around the world, Fabulous. which is really, really awesome. Yeah. Thank you all out there for being our supporters. For all of you listening, please subscribe to our podcast and please leave us a review. If you have any questions, comments, or topic suggestions, please email us at contact at couplesynergy.com. Uh, also, if you'd like to be a guest on Couple Synergy, um, just email us at contact at couplesynergy.com. For more information about Couple Synergy and our programs, such as Relationship 101, the Couples Weekend Intensive, our online membership called Connections, and our premier program called Couple to Couple. Look us up online at couplessynergy.com. And if you know someone who could benefit from this episode, please download it and share it. And thank you for listening. And until next time, synergize your life and synergize your love. You have been listening to Couple Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. Couple Synergy was recorded, edited, and produced by Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. Voiceover and music entitled Breathe and Let Go was recorded and composed by Gina Gonzalez.